Welcome back. All right, it has been a while since I did a video on this topic. Now, if you've been a, a, a member of the channel for a long time, if you've been a viewer of the channel for a long time, you've likely heard me discuss this topic. I totally understand if your opinion is one of, yeah, I'll, I'll pass on this and wait for the next video. I totally get that, but I do want to talk about power rankings as we're still early in the season. And I do like to explain my thought process that goes into it. Now, I try to stay out of the comment section on the power rankings because it always is going to upset somebody. And there's always going to be the, I can't believe this team's in this spot. I can't believe, what's the reasoning? So we'll go through this. And early in the season, obviously, there is still going to be that subjective side to it. So we'll start at the top. Uh, and especially early in the season, it doesn't often reflect the standings. Uh, and late in the season, it really doesn't reflect the standings. So uh, there, there are times where the team that's first overall in the NHL may not be in the top five of the power rankings. And I'll say, I can't believe this team's in sixth. They're number one in the NHL. That doesn't mean they're playing the best right now. Um, look at the President's Trophy. How often have we watched a team finish first in the NHL and then playoff time, they're done. And so that that's part of the reason why I'm perfectly fine with the team on the power rankings that might be number one in the NHL, not being anywhere near number one in the power rankings. They may not be playing the best hockey at that time. And again, it's going to be subjective. It, it absolutely is. Wins and losses may not dictate movement. So this is where this side of the board comes in. This is why I put this on. So uh, during the 16 game night, Vancouver beat Chicago six to three. Third straight win, good for Vancouver. However, I did not move Vancouver up because of that 6-3 to three win. Um, I didn't move Chicago down for that 6-3 to three loss. I felt like both teams were in the, the right spot. And so while if Chicago had beaten Vancouver, I probably would have moved them down, very likely would have moved them down. The win over Chicago did not tell me, okay, Vancouver is clearly playing better than the team ahead of them on the power rankings because they beat the Blackhawks. So... Strength of opponent definitely matters. Now, Minnesota beating Florida, that's the kind of result that I wanted to see for Minnesota. It did result in a big jump for Minnesota. It did result in a drop for Florida. Not a dramatic one, and I expect Florida to go right back up. Once they're healthy again, and, and they get on a roll, and we know they're going to. Uh, again, the fact they won the Stanley Cup, they could very well have some, some banged up players and some Injuries from last season that haven't quite healed up yet. That does happen. But anyways, um, I thought that was very reflective of how Minnesota's playing well. And part of the reason, too, why I was really impressed with Minnesota was that third period in Florida, they just shut it down. And so that was the most impressive win I've seen Minnesota have this season. So, yes, that absolutely boosts them up. Uh, Dallas losing against Buffalo. This was tricky. Buffalo's still 3-4-1. And while the record doesn't necessarily dictate things, I didn't want to overreact to one win over Dallas necessarily, especially since Dallas, they pull the goalie, they get a couple of goals. They almost tied it. So for Dallas, I didn't really bust them down for that. Uh, on this night, a lot of the teams that are around that same area as Dallas also lost. And so one of the things that I have to be you know, aware of with power rankings is not overreacting. So let's say that teams three, four, five, and six all lose on the same night. Now the team that's in seventh place wins and they win big. Does that team in seventh place belong in third? Probably not. It's probably not a reflection that you can have. And it, and then if I do that, well then it's it's kind of knocked everything off kilter. At least personally to me, I I don't I don't like to have that kind of movement because then a few days later it might have more of it again, and it just makes it chaos. Uh, there was one year that I had a highly reactive power rankings, and it, they were awful. They were they were awful, and I switched from reactive pretty quickly because, yeah, it, it didn't mean much, and I would just stand in front of the board, which was not the puck board. Puck board was made for me, which was awesome. Um, and so I, I would stand in front of the board and go, yeah, so this week this team's number one. Well, we'll see what happens next week because I, I didn't have, there wasn't any opinion in it, but it also didn't just mean anything. So a team could go on a six or seven game winning streak and end up top five in the power rankings, even though they might not be even a playoff team and maybe they didn't beat really good teams, but I tried to take opinion out of it and it just, it flopped. Um, now, 
I wanted to highlight Toronto and Tampa because this is also part and parcel of doing this. So they both played back-to-back -back nights. Very different results. Toronto wins 5-2 against Tampa, all right, and then they lost 6-2 against Columbus. Whereas Tampa loses 5-2 at Toronto, and then they win 8-5 at New Jersey. I consider New Jersey to be a better team at this point than Columbus. So, right? So you kind of have to weigh that, and you have to look at those back-to-back -back results and say, okay, so Toronto was better than Tampa that night, but the next night, Columbus made Toronto look worse than Tampa because Tampa was laying a beating on New Jersey. So there's going to be that, okay, so which team do I feel of the two right now is actually playing better? And that's where I have to kind of weigh in a little bit. So there's that. And then I'll come into this, but we're going to go to uh, point number two. Regulation wins get more weight. It's just reality. Uh, shootouts I treat like a tie. So if a team's winning games in shootouts, and I've had this before, very often when a, a, a fan base is upset, like, our, why isn't our team better? We're on a four-game winning streak. And I go, okay. And then I'll look through it and I'll go, okay, so they had a regulation win against, say, San Jose. And then they had a shootout win. Then they won an overtime against Anaheim. And then they had another shootout win. That's why they're not moving up the board very much. Because they're getting wins, but how those wins come about give you a good idea of which teams are actually playing really well. So, for instance, uh, this 5-1 to one win by Minnesota over Florida obviously would get more weight than if you won in a shootout against Chicago. You won in a shootout against Buffalo, right? So, obviously, one of those results is more impressive than the other, and that's something I keep in mind as well. Plus, it let's say Minnesota loses to Florida 3-2 to two in overtime, and it's a really exciting, fun back-and-forth game. And meanwhile... Um, Chicago destroys San Jose 8-1. to It does not mean Chicago belongs above Minnesota on the, on the board. Obviously, right? And you have to take that into consideration. So that's something, again, that when I was doing the reactive power rankings, I wasn't taking into consideration that now I do. Where I say, okay, yeah, that was a big win, but it was over a team that's 31st or, or 28th on the board. And so I have to take that, take that in and then weigh it, right? Uh, last season standings do have an effect on the power rankings to start the season and through the first few weeks because there are teams that start slowly that are going to be pretty good. There are teams who start really well who are going to end up not being playoff teams. It happens every year. So I have to take that into consideration as well. For instance, Colorado, Edmonton, fully expect them to recover, get above the playoff line and have pretty good runs. Um, and then there's the question of can Calgary keep that up? I don't want to say Calgary can't because I think they can, but it's going to be hard for them. It's going to be very difficult for them to be able to stay ahead of teams like Edmonton, Colorado. And then it's going to be a matter of, you know, the full 82 games, do they have the staying power? And so there is there is that question for me with that. Um, but I, it doesn't mean I don't move them up or anything. I just keep that in mind of, okay, the expectations for this year and, and just to make sure that... Um, a team doesn't go on a five-game winning streak and end up just their number one because they have a winning streak. Because that's that's not something I can stand here and defend. And and definitely, let's say I, I go to a game on Friday. Which I'm, I'm going to go to the Abbotsford game on Friday. And, um, you know, somebody asked me, so number two on the power rankings was San Jose. How'd that happen? I don't want to be going, well, they got a winning streak going. So, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea why they're the but they're they're winning so they automatically have to go up so again regulation wins get more weight obviously regulation wins against top teams get the maximum amount of weight uh they say a lot right there so right now winnipeg and the new york rangers would be the ones that if a team beats them in regulation that will definitely garner a lot of attention from me um and the power rankings are the reason why i push myself to watch as many games as i do um this year i'm easing off a little bit I'm, I'm going to allow myself the occasional night off. Not just for concerts. I have no more concerts coming up. Although, we do have a musical we're going to in Vancouver next month. So, we're definitely doing that. Uh, but, the, I have to watch as many games as I can. So, I get a really, as accurate as I can be. Because, again, there's that subjective part of it. About which teams I feel like are playing the best hockey right now. And which teams I feel like should be pretty good this upcoming week. And that's where you and and I'll I'll come back to that on on point 10. But that's why I watch as many games as I can. 
because I feel like it gives me a better image of, okay, these teams are playing well, but they're losing. This team isn't necessarily playing great, but they're winning. That kind of thing, right? Um, it's easier to move up in the bottom row, comparatively speaking with other rows. It's also easier to drop in the top row than others. This seems pretty self-explanatory, but clearly the teams at the bottom are going to be the ones that uh, struggle and aren't necessarily the greatest, and the teams at the top should be the ones playing the best. And so if you have a team that, say, goes 0-3, and they were second on the power rankings, they're probably going to have a healthy drop. If a team is, say, 30th on the power rankings, and they have a three-game winning streak that week, they're very likely to move up because the teams that they're competing with in that row are not very good. And for the teams in the top row, the teams they're competing against are pretty darn good, and they're probably still winning. So you're going to see more dramatic drops for the teams, I would say, in the top 10 than elsewhere, and more dramatic rises in the bottom 10 if a team's playing well that's been put in that bottom 10. Um, I don't adjust for injuries. I just throw this out there because I know there's other power rankings that do. I think most do, to be honest, that a, a big, big name gets injured, and before they've even played the next game, you'll see them dropped in the power rankings. It'll be like, well... This guy's out. So, for instance, Robert Thomas is out for St. Louis. Have I adjusted the Blues down because of that? No. Do I care that a team's dealing with a bunch of injuries? No. Because the power rankings, the injuries don't really play any kind of factor into it. Like, I'm not going to give LA special consideration that their defense is poor, but they're without Doughty, so I don't really want to move them down. It, it does not matter. It's here's how the teams are playing right now. The injuries don't have an effect one way or the other. And with Doughty, I don't assume that LA's defense is going to be bad because Doughty's out. That's not something I do either. Um, they're updated daily because at one point in time, I tried to do like a weekly update. It just, it's a mess. Because I will still go back to every single day's games. I will still go back to every single result and go, okay, that, that moves this up, but that moves this down, and then that moves. No, it's easier just to do it on the daily and then I don't stress about it. So Saturday night rolls around. You guys get a screenshot for where teams are that night. And the Saturday pay, the Saturday power, power rankings include the games that are played on Saturday night. Because sometimes there's that discussion and, well, you know, I guess you didn't include tonight's game. No, I've included Saturday night's game in the power rankings. And I know, too, that... Ha, so... This leads into point number eight. I am well aware, before power rankings go live, nine times out of ten, I know which fan base is going to be angry. I know which fan base is going to be pleasantly surprised. And I, I still go through it. So I'm like, okay, this fan base isn't going to be happy because of where they're at. But there's a reason they are where they are. I will do my best to explain it in the power rankings video. And then I'll move on. And that's why generally I stay out of the... Uh, comment section on it because if you're happy with where your team's at but you're confused by why they're there I can I can explain that uh, but if you're angry there's probably not much I can say to make you not angry other than to say my power rankings have absolutely no effect on future games um, and they're they're specifically mine so they don't have any influence on power rankings for anybody else so I I, I know and I understand why people get upset but at the same time I have to look at it and say okay how sustainable is this? So with teams that missed the playoffs last year and, you know, had middling results overall, I will hold them back a little bit at the start of the season. I want to see if it's going to be sustainable and if it's going to work. I will move them up, yes, but I don't make those dramatic jumps. And I know that people get upset with that, but again, I tried with the dramatic jumps in the past and it, it, it doesn't go well. Because you end up with, say, you know, San Jose goes through Canada, has a nice winning streak going on, they make a big jump up the board, and then over the next few weeks, they look awful, and suddenly they're all the way down at the bottom again. So I, I try to make sure that it's measured, my response is measured, but if a team's playing well, they will end up moving up, they will end up first. Right now, number one in the power rankings is Winnipeg. And last year, there were times where Jets fans weren't necessarily happy with where they were in the power rankings. But right now, I believe they're playing the best hockey. And so they're first on the board. Uh, the Rangers are still number two as well. Now, there are times I'm a bit surprised on Saturday because, again, I'm moving teams day to day. I do not track who's moved up and who's moved down. Now, on Saturday night, when I get that one through 32 and I compare it with last week, 
and I'll say, this team dropped and this team went up. Why? I will look through those week's results and I'll go, okay, I might want to make a bit of a, a I always call it like a market correction. Because, you know, on the stock market, how everything's going well, and all of a sudden, boom, and they call it, oh, it's a market correction. So there's times where a market correction will cause it to jump or cause it to drop. So I figure power rankings is kind of like a stock market, right? So there are times where I look and go, this needs a market correction. This team needs one. So um, especially early in the season, that will happen. So getting back to the teams that struggled last year and do well this year, there are market corrections that happen there. Where I'm going to say, you know what? Yeah, this team's moving up a lot this week. They're playing really, really well. Um, and then there's the balance between reactive and predictive. And any website that gives out power rankings, they kind of sort of want the power rankings to uh, show you how this upcoming week could go. Now, hockey's very unpredictable. Feels like it's, it's more unpredictable than other sports. Um, I don't know whether that's true or not. I've heard that it's more unpredictable and more random than other sports. But I want it to kind of be a balance between reactive and predictive. And once we get around to the middle of the season, there's not as much movement. There's nowhere near as much movement as there is early in the season because we kind of get a feel for which ones are doing well, which ones aren't. There's going to be teams at the bottom of the standings that suddenly put together a streak. There are going to be teams near the top that, you know, fall down. But generally, you get a good feel for who the better teams in the NHL are, I would say by about mid-November, right? It's it's not a coincidence that that's right around you know that Thanksgiving deadline and okay where are they in that in that time period because yeah the good teams have usually risen to the top and the teams that aren't going to make the playoffs and are going to miss by a lot are normally kind of already out of the race so tonight there's nine games I wanted to just look at the first seven so the first seven by when they start um, so I've I've left off Winnipeg Seattle. And LA and San Jose. But you know what? I've got it right over here. I, and after I'm done these seven, I'll go ahead and talk about the other two. So Dallas and Boston. Dallas is coming off a loss against Buffalo. In order to avoid a drop in the power rankings, they kind of need a win tonight, dependent on what happens with other teams that are around that same area on the board, right? Now for Boston, Boston at 3 3 and 1 is flirting with being below 500. If they go below 500, there's definitely a drop in their future, as in tonight. Um, I know it's Dallas. Dallas is one of the best teams in the league, but Boston's coming off of an embarrassing loss against Nashville. If they can't have some kind of winning effort tonight, at least get it to overtime, something, um, I, I'm going to have to bust them down. Um, St. Louis and Toronto, this is the first test without Robert Thomas, right? Uh, Toronto coming off of that embarrassing loss against Columbus. This is where you want to see that bounce back if you're Toronto. So this is kind of a key game for both. If St. Louis wants to show that not having Thomas is not going to hurt their attack, this is where it shows. If Toronto's going to show that the loss against Columbus is a rallying cry and they're going to bounce back, this is the night to do it. Um, there's way too many articles right now on how different are Toronto. Toronto's a completely different team than last year. Actually, no. Toronto's core is still largely the same. They have better shot blockers than last year. So far, OEL's been a pretty good experiment. But they are largely the same team they had last season. Uh, New Jersey and Detroit's an interesting one. There's more on the line for New Jersey than for Detroit. Detroit's lower down on the board. New Jersey, of course, you get Pesci and Hughes into the lineup tonight. And if New Jersey has a hard time keeping the puck out of their net, this is where we're looking at a drop for New Jersey. Because that'll be back-to-back -back games where they've struggled to keep the puck out of their net. And even though they're getting healthier, if the results don't start to show up, I'm going to have to bust them down. Uh, Minnesota and Tampa, this is I, this is going to be interesting because Minnesota's coming off that 5-1 to one win against Florida. So do they have a letdown against Tampa after that game against Florida? And does Tampa Bay uh, take that 8-5 to five win against New Jersey, builds up their confidence a bit, and being back home after a road trip, do we see a really good game from them? Florida and the Rangers, uh, the Florida Panthers, defending Stanley Cup champions, uh, they're 4-3-1 and one currently, I do believe. The Rangers 5-0-1 oh, so far this year. This is a big one, I think, for Florida. Uh, they still don't have Barkov. Barkov's getting closer, of course. Uh, but if the Rangers beat them, and especially if the Rangers beat them, say, easily, let's say it's like 4-1 to one or 5-1, to one, that starts to then increase my level of concern with Florida, and Florida starts to drop down. 
And if the Rangers were to win a game against Florida of that nature, and then we see Seattle beat Winnipeg, that switches who's first. Automatically, that would switch who's first on the board. If the Rangers can handle Florida, and if Winnipeg struggles against Seattle, I can't justify keeping Winnipeg in first place. Despite that being the first loss on the season, I would, I would kind of have to move the Rangers up uh, based on a big win over Florida if that's what took place. Carolina and the Calgary Flames. This is a bigger game for Carolina. Uh, Carolina's been one up, one down so far. They're one game above 500. And so now you're looking to get two above 500. Last year, the Western Canadian swing did not go well for them. Road trips were hard for Carolina this year. They need to show that that's not going to be a thing. Uh, and for Calgary, they're on a hot streak. I don't think I move Calgary down if they lose tonight, to be honest. Um, they're higher on the board right now than they were on Saturday. And even if they lose against Carolina, unless they get you know destroyed by Carolina, I don't see any reason necessarily to move them down. Though, Ottawa's right next to them on the board. Or Ottawa, Utah is right next to them on the board. Utah's at home against Colorado. The Avs looking to show we're getting better, we're getting better. This is a good test. For Utah, they need to show they can stop the bleeding here and they can get things going because if Utah gets you know taken out by Colorado, and especially if it's a lopsided loss for them, then that tells me, okay, Colorado's come out of their funk, they're in good shape, and Utah, there's still some growing pains for them to go through. So the other two games tonight, you got Winnipeg and Seattle. Uh, that's a big game for Seattle. If Seattle wins that, obviously they have to move up because win over Winnipeg would tell you Seattle's a pretty good team right now and then there's LA at home against San Jose if San Jose could beat LA that would move them out of last place on the board I do believe if LA loses to San Jose it, it could be a really healthy drop on Saturday for them uh if LA beats San Jose because San Jose's 0-5 and 2 um and San Jose's at the bottom of the board so it's not really much on the line for San Jose, but there is for LA. They kind of have to win that game in order to hold their position on the board. If they lose that game, you're looking at a shift for them. So that is as uh, transparent as I can make it. And, and just pointing out, this is why I do this daily. This is why I do the daily updates and look at every single game, what's on the line and everything. And I enjoy doing that. Crazy, I know, but I, I do. I enjoy it. Um... But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. I think this is the most detailed look I've ever given at, you know, the power rankings and, and how I do this. And using recent results and the results for tonight as well. And, and what those might do. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all your support, as always. Over the years, I've considered a point system. I've considered various other ways of doing it. But it it's just this way works the best for me. Where I can stand in front of a board on Saturday night and say, this team's here, and I feel like this is this is where they should be. And when it's a system that I, I don't have any, you know, subjective control over anything, I can't really make that argument for why a team's where they are on the board. So thank you guys so much for all your support as always. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I really hope this has helped some people that maybe get a little bit confused as to where certain teams are. Just go back and look at the week. Did they win in shootouts? Uh, were they overtime wins? Were they regulation wins? Did they lose in overtime? Was there an embarrassing result during the week? Was there a great result during the week? And it'll give you a better idea for the rising and the falling on any given week. But thank you guys for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.